I will take over where uh, Jock ended and talk about uh, character creation responsibility. When we say character, character is a lot of things. It is uh, most of the information you give to your players so they can play your game, your lab. And uh, in a character you can have the personality of the character, the background of the character, you can have the dreams and fears, the aims and goals, and the relations between this character and other characters. You can have specific actions, if you want to, that they should do something specific, and you can of course make up more than this. So, and character is not just the personality, but all the information that the player needs to play this lab. There are three traditions of how to create characters. The first is the big sandbox and it comes from the Dungeons and Dragons with the big rule books where there are common rules for everyone so they know what they can create in this game or in this lab. So you know that if you have 200 experience points then you can create any dwarf and fighter you want to as long as you keep in frame of the 200 experience points. So that anyone can step into this world, these rules, and they can play along in the sandbox as long as they keep in order uh, and inside the frame, as uh, Eirik pointed out yesterday. Then there are the written characters, where the game designers write the characters that the players should play. And as I pointed out just before, it can contain a lot of different information for the players to play the lab. And then the last one is where it becomes co-created and usually this happens in workshops but it can happen in other ways as well. But this is where the game designers and the players design the characters together or the game designer asks the players to design the characters together with other players. But it is not just the game designers or just the players but it's a co-created process. And of course it's not always one or the other. It's uh, mostly a mix in between. <coughs> if we put the failure to a maximum, where it's the organizers, the organizers have a lot of control. If it's you who create the characters, you can control the story, the overall storyline, and say, for this uh, family Anderson game to work, we need to have a family, and there need to be family members, and there need to be uh, the relations between them, that need to be the balance so that everyone is in on their heritage and think that this is uh, fun to play and that there is a balance uh, between the character. And also, because you are writing it all, uh, there is a consistency of quality and vision that you can make sure that every character is a good character that you've written through and that the vision, your vision of the lab, is being held every way through uh, the characters and the lab. And then in the end, if you tell me as game designers that I should play a psychopath, then I haven't decided to play a psychopath, so you give me the alibi with the character so that I can go out and act crazy and say it was the game designers who asked me to play a psychopath. It's not because every time I have to play a lab, I choose to play a psychopath. <laughs> it's because someone asked me to. On the other hand, it is time consuming to write a lot of characters, especially if you are going to write 150 of them with big uh, networks of relations. If you want to know how that feels, you can ask Charles how it is to write for Fairweather Manor right now. <laughs> and um, there is calibration needed, because when you give information to each of the players, they don't necessarily talk to each other. So maybe they misunderstood or maybe they've understood it in different ways. So there is calibration needed to all of these characters to actually become the vision that you had envisioned for the game or the lot. And then in the end, it disregards player creativity and uh, participation. That if you create everything, you don't get the creative bliss that can come out of asking the players to play along. There are different examples of uh, what you can use this for. One is the Beider Mannhof uh, experiment, where uh, it was almost portraits of uh, historical persons. So you had to portray someone who had actually been, and there were specific actions written into the characters. 
So the game designers had chosen that you should play in a specific way and there were specific actions that you needed to do. It could also be like uh, Family Anderson that you played yesterday, that there are specific characters, maybe not that much information, but it is specific characters that you need to play. Okay, I have a small exercise. All of you, close your eyes. You are going to play President Bush. You have a bad day. You're quite angry today. I would like you, in a short while, to open your eyes and turn to the person next to you and say hello to them as President Bush having a bad day. Go ahead. What I did here was that I chose exactly who you were going to play, who you were going to portray. Every one of you had a specific image in mind of who that was. I told you the feelings and what specific actions you were going to do. So I was deciding everything in this situation. Then the characters can be co-created. And when you co-create, um, I would put the fader in the middle. You have a lot of calibration that when you do it together, you can calibrate and say, oh, if your character is like this, then my character needs a bit of this and everything can be calibrated to fit together. It also gives ownership because people are part of creating the characters and they can decide what they want to play and make it into their character. And it's also, not always, but Sometimes it's creative bliss that everyone gets together and there is a feeling of flow and it's just fantastic and you create this that you really enjoy to play afterwards. It is also time consuming. If you need to have the time, for instance, with Capo, it took two weekends of a mandatory workshop before. That's a lot of time to ask the players to come before the game and participate to co-create. And then, as a game designer, you can direct, you can um, try to point out a direction that people should create in, but you're not in total control as you were if you created it all. Two examples are Cabo, where they had workshops that was a frame that they asked the players to co-create in. The other was um, the game you played yesterday, New Voices in Art where there was a questionnaire designed by the game designers that you had to answer to create your character. So it was a specific frame you got, but you put the input into the character and decided how it should look. Okay, next little exercise. Turn to the person next to you and decide on two characters you would like to play together that are both a part of the administration of President Bush. Thank you. What happened there was uh, maybe creative bliss, but at least you uh, started uh, a dialogue with the other people uh, around you and you got input on their ideas and you gave input back and somewhat you tried to find out characters that would be interesting to play together. On the fader minimum, maximum, the other end. We have uh, players creating it and traditionally where you have the rules uh, and uh, a world that the players can create in with the big uh, frame around, you can have quantity. You can have a thousand players that create their characters as long as everyone knows how many experience points they have to create characters from 
Uh, and of course, when you have a lot of people who can create their own characters, you can have more ideas. So you open up for everyone to give input to your lab. And when they create themselves, you have ownership. On the other hand, you create a frame, you're not in control at all. So you build something and you hope that when the players st step into that, that they will create something that you wished they create, but you might not know. You have a lack of calibration, you're not sure that everything fits together, and there is often a lack of connections between the players, that if you have small groups creating together, then they might not be connected to the other groups. So the big relation network that you can create if you write everything is not there if you ask the players to do it themselves. An example is the old school way of doing it, but it's also the game you're going to play tomorrow, um, where you are asked to make a lot of the input of the game. You're going to decide uh, a lot of what you're going to play. Um, when our destinies meet tomorrow. This was my last uh, slide, but there will be one last exercise. <laughs> so please close your eyes. So now, all by yourself, decide on someone you want to play in President Bush's administration. <laughs> You can decide the characters, the feelings, the relations, aims and goals and fears. Please open your eyes and turn to the person next to you and explain what you have designed. And after this there is a break, so you can stand out by the coffee stand and explain all the war stories to each other of how fantastic characters you created. Thank you very much.